Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we are reliving some frustrations by counting down the 20 hardest Resident Evil bosses. For this list, we'll be looking at those bosses throughout this epic and repopularized series that gave us heart palpitations. Admittedly, some of these bosses get easier on a player's 100th playthrough, so we're focusing our energy on the difficulty they presented upon first experiencing them. Which of these bosses gave you the hardest time? Let us know in the comments below. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. The Baby. We begin our list with one of the newer entries in the series, Resident Evil Village, and a boss that literally can't be killed. In the most terrifying chapter of the game's campaign, players enter the seemingly haunted hillside home, House Beneviento, and eventually find themselves in the basement in a puzzle-filled locked-down area reminiscent of a Saw film. This is where the baby, or the fetus, is released. A giant, crawling monstrosity that pierces the player's ears with some of the most harrowing screams ever heard in a video game. The baby cannot be beaten, as the player is weaponless and simply acts as a terrifying and jump-scary demon that follows you around in an effort to make the puzzle-solving that bit more tense. <laughs> William Birkin. Although the Resident Evil 2 remake took William Birkin to a whole new level, it's important to remember the roots of this weaselly, terrible little man. As the scientist responsible for the G-Virus, we should have assumed that once he'd infected himself, he would be no joke. What we didn't expect was a five-stage monster boss that required the player to be agile as to avoid all of his death-blowing attacks, preserve ammo in the events leading up to it, and have the aim of a trained sniper. Missing shots in these fights will cost you. Marguerite Baker. Oh, now with me, we're gonna settle this. Resident Evil 7 introduced the most messed up family in all of Resident Evil, the Bakers. The mother of the family, Marguerite, is erratic, flighty, and jittery, and her final form during our second encounter with her represents this personality perfectly. Not only is Marguerite and her long-limbed insect form incredibly difficult on a first playthrough, but it's very, very spooky and still sends shivers down our spine to this day. If the player has wasted all their flamethrower fuel dealing with her cockroaches, they're going to have a particularly hard time, as one of her few weaknesses is fire. But don't worry, you can also take shots at the giant insect hive that is living in her crotch. Her crotch, you guys. Her freaking crotch. I hate you, Marguerite. Take a bath. The Ivan Twins. Comrade Wesker, welcome to my humble abode. Even if you are a casual Resident Evil fan, you most definitely know about the tyrant bioweapons. In Resident Evil 2, it was Mr. X. In Resident Evil 3, it was Nemesis. In Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles, it is the Ivan Twins. These Mr. X at a rave looking tyrants are damn hard and require the player to have both patience during the moments when they need to stop incoming rockets and ferocity when it's time to fill these bullet sponges with lead. Do not get hit because these dudes aren't playing around. Ramon Salazar. And so, I have delivered the girl to you as promised. There's no sugarcoating this one. Ramon Salazar is a little prick, and in the final moments of his life in this game, he becomes a giant thorn. This boss fight is so difficult, it's caused some players to have full meltdowns and freakouts on Reddit, claiming that if they'd known this boss fight was in the game, they wouldn't have bought it. Ramon might be the fastest enemy in the game, making hitting him rather difficult. He also spits acid and leaves little cocoon-style bombs around the map that eviscerate Leon's health. All we can say is, relax, aim for his real body, and if all else fails, throw a golden egg at him. Vertigo. You 
in the Resident Evil 4 remake, players may have been enjoying the combat a bit too much and blasted through all their best ammo before getting to the laboratory in Chapter 10. If this is the case, Vertigo can be avoided by waiting for the elevator. For players who are feeling brave though, Vertigo can be beaten if you use the environment to your advantage and unload on him with your strongest firepower. If the player traps Vertigo in the freezing nitrogen vents located around the map, they can then unload grenades, shotgun shells and sniper rounds into his body. After a few times trapping and clapping, the player should eventually drop the giant monster. That is if he didn't drop them first. Some players didn't even realize he was a beatable boss as they took the escape immediately when it was presented. Finally, some peace and quiet. Giant Bat. A gaming concept that has somewhat been pushed out of the modern zeitgeist is the tank control style seen in classic horror games such as Silent Hill 1 through 3 and Resident Evil 1 through 3. The controls can make combat incredibly difficult as they often fight with the perspective of particular moments to create battles that are, for lack of a better word, unintuitive. Think shooting a slow moving zombie is difficult? Try unloading on a flying target with a perspective like what's seen during this giant bat fight in Resident Evil 0. Every player has their own little tricks and tips to make this boss fight doable, but no one can deny that once the little bats start appearing, a GameCube or two might get yeeted into a wall. Skag dead. Resident Evil Revelations presented us with the mutated comms officer known as the Skag Dead. This guy is grotesque and difficult, the perfect combo for a successfully awful RE boss. Like some others on our list, he has an instant death attack should the player allow the gap between them and him to close, and he also places traps all over to make the avoidance that extra bit annoying. The best way to kill him is to shoot the remaining human head of the comms officer, which is located on the Skag Dead's shoulder. Oh, but the head is super tiny in comparison and incredibly difficult to hit. Good luck with that. Ramon Salazar. Ah, you just missed her. The ritual is over. She left with my men to an island. What? Ramon proved not only an issue in the 2023 remake, but an issue originally as well with his almost instant death attacks and the way he barrages them onto Leon. It's worth pointing out that should the player save up enough money to get a rocket launcher, this fight can be a one shot and done scenario. But if the player is stuck with their other guns, it will require a tiny bit more finesse and avoidance. Salazar does not joke around, but killing that tiny bastard brings a joy that is indescribable. Albert Wesker. Don't you two ever tire of failing in your mission? Albert Wesker and his many, many stages of boss encounters marks a turn in the series that many players felt was its downfall, of course, before being revitalized by RE7 and the many, many remakes that followed. The boss fight is something out of a Sharknado or Piranha Conda film with stages that change with difficulty and approach. The first stage involves firing rockets, yes, at one man, which can only hit him if he's flanked. Flanking with an RPG. Gotcha. The next stage is a QTE boss fight, which we all know can be incredibly frustrating. And the finale is a fight inside of an active volcano, which involves avoiding lava, brutal attacks, and shooting tiny emblems on his body. Nothing like raising the stakes around the player to make those weak spots look extra small. Tyrant T-78. Resident Evil Code Veronica gives the player another infamous tyrant fight with the T-078 model. Even when the player knows what they are doing, fighting the tyrant in the air during the plane encounter is very difficult, but it's the trial and error that makes this particular fight that little bit harder. The player has to avoid the tyrant in an incredibly small area as his attacks will kill you with two hits. 
you also have to deal a massive amount of damage to get him in a state where he appears to be stumbling. Once he is stumbling and without any prompt, you must use a computer in the corner of the room to launch a crate into the beast and send him toppling from the plane. Who knew, right? G4. The Resident Evil 2 remake was an absolute masterpiece. A masterpiece with an assortment of some of the most frustrating and awful bosses the series has ever seen. Whilst Leon must face the tyrant for a final time, Claire instead faces William Birkin's final G-form, the G4. Gifted with a minigun, this bullet sponge can take every last bullet that thing will fire and still run a marathon. He is fast, flighty and constantly jumping and Claire absolutely refuses to sprint, duck or dive. Not by choice, but by game design. There is no real trick to this bad boy, just hit it as much as possible and try to get hit as little as possible. Resident Evil 2, bada bing bada boom. Mother Miranda. Is that you? Oh, how I've missed you! The sheer amount of time as Mother Miranda is mentioned in Resident Evil Village makes it clear to the player that by the time they have the opportunity to face her, it's going to be no cakewalk. The sheer power of this villain is set up and then represented perfectly in this Resident Evil entry. Her difficulty comes down to two very simple factors. She can take an inconceivable amount of damage and she has a wide set of abilities. So not only does she take a lot of firepower to drop, but the player is also expending a lot of mental effort to wrap their head around her abilities. Mother Miranda is a bit of a mother My daughter! My Eva! Jack Krauser. Krauser was no walk in the park in the Resident Evil 4 remake, but we're looking at the original entry for this particular boss fight. It's worth mentioning that Krauser has an encounter that is entirely quick time event based, and it is such a pain in the ass that even talking about it at length will give me a hemorrhoid. In the final chapter of the 2005 entry, the player has to face Krauser whilst puzzling and retrieving emblems that he has hidden around this section of the game. Krauser's accuracy is frustrating, and after battling through this section, the player fights an incredibly tough and mutated Krauser. The fight is a little easier when players work out the secret weapon in Leon's arsenal that Krauser references constantly throughout the game, but we'll let you guys figure that out for yourselves. But feel free to take a stab at a guess in the comments. Nemesis. Resident Evil 3 took the tyrant version of Mr. X to a whole new level by introducing Nemesis, a tyrant version that chases the player down all throughout the game. You will have to fight him on a handful of occasions, but no matter how many times you do it, he keeps coming back. The player can even take him on outside of the assigned battles and he will drop gun upgrades and equipment for a job well done, but he'll never die. Each assigned encounter is as brutal as the last and all require an exorbitant amount of ammo, patience and understanding of tank controls. Jack Baker. <laughs> Jack Baker will not die. Taking on Jack Baker throughout Resident Evil 7 is always a pain in the ass, but it is his final mutated form in the boathouse that is the most difficult. Moving between the lower and upper levels, the player has to get the angle on his weak spots, all while avoiding his very tough attacks. Different guns will drop the weak spots quicker than others, but his attacks are frequent and don't even think that climbing ladders leaves you free from getting hit because it doesn't. He will move around to protect his weak eyes and it's not always the easiest to get the angle, especially when he won't sit still. (laughs) 
G3. Whatever you do, don't stop until it's finished. Trust me. This ends now. The final iteration of William Birkin's transformation for Leon and the second last for Claire. This boss fight is no joke. The game does very kindly place a few helping items around the fight arena, but some of the hiding places will back the player into a corner, which they will then have to fight their way out of, and a picked up green herb isn't exactly a great weapon. The fight requires the player to assault the G3 constantly, and Leon in particular will have to make heavy use of the soft eye weak spots, as he doesn't have a grenade launcher. Heisenberg. But I've got a rebellion. So stay out of my way. Resident Evil Village presents the player with an incredibly difficult boss fight. It's intense, fast paced, and epic. Oh, and it also puts the player in control of a tank they've never driven or used before. The Heisenberg boss fight, both in the tank and on your feet, takes a good amount of guarding and damage dealing. Focus on attacking the red parts, use the cannon as much as possible, save your explosive ammo for when you take over as Ethan, and when you can't do any of the above, shoot his stomach. Cross your fingers, load your guns, and pray to whatever god you believe in that everything is going to be okay. Mr. X At the end of the Leon scenario of Resident Evil 2, the player faces off against none other than the tyrant who has been terrorizing him throughout the entire game, Mr. X, in his super tyrant form. The player just needs to survive a minute and a half. Easy, right? You'd be surprised. If the player hasn't stocked up on healing equipment, this is a minute and a half of dodging, as Mr. X's hits can kill instantly, or get the player on the brink of death. Use your strongest weapons to keep him at bay and wait for the time to end so Ada can drop a rocket launcher to bring this fight to a close. Even with an arsenal of heals and ammo, this fight is really hard. Nemesis. The 2020 remake of Resident Evil 3 takes the awful and incredibly strong nemesis and upgrades him to a beast worthy of one of the hardest boss fights of all time. His final form is one of his worst. Large, grotesque, and strong, he takes a skillful amount of dodging and a sprinkle of luck to take down. The fight requires players to take out his pulsating blobs, which require a few shots, whilst avoiding his incredibly powerful attacks, to give them time to push generators into position to pull up a railgun. Got all that? You better have because you'll have to do it a few times. The fight takes some time and can end very quickly at any moment if the player drops their focus for even a second. With a name like Nemesis, we should have assumed the level of frustration this anus would cause us. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.